In this video, we're going to take a look at one more example involving continuity. We're going to be looking for the value of a parameter b in this case to try to make a function continuous. So imagine we have a function h defined by the following piecewise definition. h of w is calculated by calculating bw plus 1 if w is less than 2 and calculating 1 over bw plus 2 if w is greater than or equal to 2. Find all values of b, if any, that make this function continuous for all real numbers w. So our first task is going to be to see if we can make the function continuous at w equals 2. Now w equals 2 is important here because at w equals 2 the function changes. If we input a w less than 2 we use this upper line of the definition, the linear part, and if w is bigger than or equal to 2, then we use the lower part, the reciprocal function. So strange things are happening at w equals 2, and so that's the point where we're going to concentrate our attention first of all. So to consider continuity, we have to consider the limit as w approaches 2 of h of w. Now because h is defined differently for w less than 2 than for greater than 2, we need to consider the two one-sided limits at w equals 2. So let's consider the left-hand limit first. Limit as w approaches 2 from the minus side or from the left of h of w. Now, uh, in this situation, remember w approaches 2 from the minus side means w is less than 2. Okay, that's the left-hand approach. And if w is less than 2, then we use this upper line of the definition. So we compute the limit. We can replace w, h of w in this case by bw plus 1. This is just a linear function. The b is a constant. The w is the variable. And as w gets close to 2, this comes out to be 2b plus 1. For the limit from the right, here we have uh, w bigger than 2 now. That's what w approaches 2 from the right means. And so for those values, we have to use the lower line of the reciprocal part of the definition. So we end up looking at the limit as w approaches 2 from the positive side of 1 over bw plus 2. Because the limit of a quotient is a quotient of limits, we can take the limit by taking the limit of the top. 1 becomes 1. And the limit of the denominator, bw plus plus 2. And so there's the limit from the right-hand side. Now for h to be continuous at w equals 2, the limit of h of w at 2 must exist. For this to be the case, these two one-sided limits must be equal to each other. So if we want to force h to be continuous at 2, we need to have the left-hand limit, 2b plus 1, equal to the right-hand limit, 1 over 2b plus 2. Now we're going to find the values of b that make this true by solving this equation algebraically. So we'd start by multiplying both sides by 2b plus 2 to get this quadratic. 2b plus 1 times 2b plus 2 equals 1. And we now use some algebra in the quadratic formula to solve this result. The algebra reduces this to 4b squared plus 6b plus 1 equals 0. And if we apply the quadratic formula to find the values of b that make this quadratic equal to 0, we find that b has two values, either minus, square root of, minus 3 plus the square root of 5 over 4, or minus 3 plus the square root of 5 over 4. So there's two possible values for b. Now, we still want to check and make sure those values for b make h continuous. So one way to start that investigation is by looking at some graphs. So here uh, are the graphs of the two functions that result from the two values of b. So first of all, if b takes on the value minus 3 plus root 5 over 4, so down here we've gone to the h definition and we've just put in that value for b in those two places. And the graph of this function is shown here. And we can see that it does look to be continuous at 2. Okay. And there's no other jumps or breaks in the graph, so it looks like maybe this function h 
with this day if b does turn out to be continuous. If b is equal to minus 3 minus root 5 over 2, then replace b by that number. So again, here's where the b was in the original formula. And again, if we graph that function, we come up with this. Again, it looks good at 2. There's no break. The little the dots, the function defined there, it looks like the limit agrees with the function value. So again, it appears that this value b also makes h into a continuous function. Now, as is often the case when dealing with graphs, you've got to be a little careful. Graphs show you a little part of a function, but not everything. And it turns out that one of these functions is continuous for all real numbers and the other is not. So let's do some further investigations to see what the situation is here. First, a closer look at the first case. If b equals minus 3 plus root 5 over 4, we saw h is defined as follows. Now, as far as uh, being continuous, for w less than 2, we use this top expression. This is just a linear equation of the form b to n plus 1. It's a polynomial. Those are always continuous. Okay. So this is certainly continuous when h, the h is certainly continuous when w is less than 2. Now, for w greater than or equal to 2, we have to deal with this lower piece. And because we have a denominator, we have to make sure that the denominator is never equal to 0 whenever it's being used, which is for the case w greater than or equal to 2. So this expression will be continuous for all real w, except for the value for which bw plus 2 equals 0. Okay. And so this is the only possible point of discontinuity. So if we set bw plus 2 equal to 0, we find that w equals minus 2 over b. And remember, in this case, the b has the value minus 3 plus root 5 over 4. Let's put in for b here. Add a little algebra and rationalize the denominator. Gives us a value of w equals 6 plus 2w plus 2 root 5, which is about 10.47. Now, we want to notice that, num that value was bigger than 2. So it is a value of w that could arise in that lower line. So, because of this, we see the second line for the expression for h results in a point of discontinuity if x equals 6 plus 2 root 5. Now, we didn't see this point in the previous graph because we only graphed a, the h on a small interval. Okay. But if we include this, if we uh, enlarge the interval on which we show the graph, we see a graph looking something like this. And so, uh, we do see the discontinuity at the value of about 10 and a half. What you see happens here is that there's evidently a vertical asymptote or something of that nature right here. The function going off to infinity on one side, minus infinity on the other, and of course that makes the function not continuous. So for the value b equals minus 3 plus root 5 over 4, resulting function is continuous at all but one point, and so it is not continuous for all real numbers, but it is continuous as long as you avoid the point 6 plus 2 root 5. What about the other case? If b equals minus 3 minus root 5 over 4, the considerations are the, are the same. Again, when w is less than 2, we just have this linear function, again, bw plus 1. And so this also is continuous for w less than 2. For the w greater than equal to 2 part of the function, we again are looking at a reciprocal function. And again, note that the expression is continuous at all points except the point where this denominator is equal to 0. So again, we have to worry what happens if bw plus 2 is equal to 0. And again, we solve that equation. w equals minus 2b over w. And for the value of b, minus 3 minus root 5 over 4, 
this results in 6 minus 2 root 5, which is 1.53. And that is less than 2. So if w equals 1.53, which is less than 2, we would not use that lower part of the definition. We would use the upper part. And so this lower part is not going to contribute a discontinuity. So once again, I guess just to emphasize, this w value turns out to be less than 2. And so if we have to worry about 6 minus 2 root 5, we would do that using the upper line of the function. So this does not result in a point of discontinuity. So this function is continuous with this value b for all real numbers w, which means the graph we saw on the previous slide, or previous in the video, is pretty accurate. We could still graph on a larger interval if we wanted to, but, but that really isn't necessary.